We want to look at Colossians chapter 1. I've uh, been this year preaching uh, through the book of Colossians in our Sunday mornings. Our theme at our, uh, my church this year is rooted uh, in Christ and uh, just encouraging people to grow in Christ, to grow, to get built up in Christ, to get rooted in the Lord and to move forward to grow. And, uh, and we've been going through the book of Colossians. We've been going in Colossians since February and uh, we'll probably finish sometime in September, October, uh, just verse by verse. And so uh, uh, don't be surprised today if all the messages that I preach are from the book of Colossians. And uh, we've been in there, and I would actually had uh, two or three of them. I was going back and forth this morning, uh, which one to preach. And uh, I think we'll, we'll go with this this morning, Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. Uh, 9 through 11, and we'll just, we'll have a, uh, just a little lesson on prayer here this morning uh, from Colossians chapter 1 in verses 9 through 11. The Bible says in verse 9, For this cause uh, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom in spiritual understanding that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to the glorious power, unto, sorry, unto His glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Giving th- well, well, we'll stop there in, in verse, uh, verse 11. And uh, we're going to look at this idea of prayer and a rooted prayer this morning, a rooted prayer. A prayer. And uh, I am preaching verse by verse, so I don't have time to go back and kind of set all this up. You know, when you preach verse by verse uh, through the Bible, they're all connected, so they always tie in with the other verses. But just briefly to, uh, to kind of get you set up for these verses, uh, we see here that the Paul is praying for the, the, the church at Colossae, and this is his prayer for them. And since he heard in the previous verses, since he had heard of their testimony, that by the way, the church had a testimony of faith in Christ. They had a testimony of love for all the saints. And Paul was grateful and he was thankful for this great testimony of faith in Christ this church had and for the the love that they had for the saints. And Paul was praying then for this church. And he's all, here's what I pray for you. And, uh, and so we're going to look at this, this prayer that, that Paul has for this church. Now, uh, this is uh, not a church that, that uh, Paul started, and uh, these are people that Paul did not necessarily know personally, but he had heard of them, and he had heard of this, this church, and he heard of their faith and their love, and he, he, he prayed uh, for these people. He prayed for them. And so we want to look at this prayer that, that Paul prayed. Remember, Paul... Uh, by the Holy Spirit, taught us much about prayer uh, in, the, in the New Testament. Uh, Paul was one who prayed for the church at Ephesus. He prayed for the church at Philippi. He prayed for the church at Thessalonica. We see he prayed for the church at, for all the saints in Rome. And uh, he prayed for Timothy uh, day and night, it says. And, and uh, he is the one who taught us to pray about everything in Philippians 4, verse 6. And, and uh, he taught us to, to pray that the gospel would have free course in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, and verses 1 through 2. And, and he taught us in, in 1 Timothy chapter 2 to pray first. First of all, and, uh, and uh, he taught us that prayer is essential to spiritual war, 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 warfare <laughs> in Ephesians chapter 6. And we see that Paul, by the Holy Spirit, has taught and said much about prayer in, in the Bible. And we're going to see here in Colossians, uh, in Colossians uh, chapter uh, 1 uh, this, this morning that Paul has a prayer that I think we should, we should examine and look at and we should practice ourselves in praying this way. I think it's a rooted uh, prayer. It's a prayer that we can pray for, uh, our, for your pastor. Uh, it's a prayer that you could pray for your, for your kids. This is a prayer that you could pray for your church, uh, for other churches. I wouldn't mind if you prayed this way for my church. <laughs> And uh, this is a, 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 a prayer that uh, I believe you could ask these things for yourself and pray this way. And we see that it is a rooted prayer, and I don't think there's any way I'm going to keep my Bible pages where they're supposed to be uh, this morning. So anyway, I'll just won't worry about it. 
and hopefully we'll make it through. But we want to see this, this prayer, this rooted prayer. And understand today that, that without prayer, you know, without prayer, uh, you, you will uh, drift from the Lord. You know, you, you, will, you will drift, you will, you will uh, uh, move. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> uh, you, will, you, you will drift, you, will, you have to pray. And the whole idea of my series through Colossians is being rooted and grounded in Christ. Without prayer, you will not be rooted and built up and grounded in Christ. You, you have to pray. And so I think we need to pray this way all the time. We see, first of all, here that it is a, a passionate prayer. It is a passionate prayer. In, in, in verse 9, we see it says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire. We'll stop right there. And to desire. We, we see that Paul said he didn't cease to pray. He said, we, since we've heard of your, of, of your testimony and we heard of your love for the saints and your faith in Christ, we have not ceased to pray for you and to desire for you. We see that word desire there uh, is the idea. Uh, in the, in the, you look up the Greek word, it's the idea of of begging or calling out in earnestness. It's kind of like James uh, uh, 5, uh, 16, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And, and he desired in, in to pray. He desired that the church would grow and the people would, would uh, uh, move forward in, in their faith and in their life. He, he, it was a passionate prayer. And we need to learn to pray passionately. You know, I find it's hard enough just to get people to pray, but much less to get them to pray passionately. <laughs> you know, you can uh, tell people, all that, you need to pray, 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 and then people will come to you for counsel and help, and you'll be like, have you prayed about it? Well, you're like, well, <laughs> and then I, that's my response, well. <laughs> you got to p- learn to pray, and you need to learn to pray passionately, and, and I think we can get caught up in, 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 in ruts. I have a prayer list, and I, I have a... Uh, I have our church's prayer list, and I keep it. And then on the back of the church's prayer list, I keep my own list typed on the back of that one and, 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 and with all these things on there. And, and i got to be careful that I don't just get caught in repeating names and, and so forth. But uh, I, I need to learn to pray passionately. Pay passionately for people. And we need to, to be passionate in our prayer life. It doesn't just need to be some mundane thing or something lord bless us all everyone amen Uh, no you're talking to the lord and and we need god and we need his power we look at the day and age we live in we need the lord and do you care do you love the people that are sitting next to you here in the church would you could you say that uh, uh, of you i have not ceased to pray for my church i have not ceased to pray for my pastor i uh, and i desire i have a desire for them (laughs) To and we'll look at the things that Paul's going to pray. Can you say that about yourself? Or you might say today, "Well, I I did I used to pray for my pastor. I, I well at one point I did pray for my church. At one point, well I did pray for my kids." Have you lost that passion and that desire? We we need to have a passion, a desire to pray and to go before the Lord and 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 pray for one another and care about one another and. And uh, just as I've become a pastor, I just realize even more than when I was an assistant pastor how important it is that a church pray for one another. You know, before I prayed, prayer list and all this, but as I've been the pastor for almost three years now, I realize, man, we need to pray for one another. And we need to be passionate and pray for one another and love one another. If we're not praying for each other and loving one another, it's going to cause problems in the church. We've got to pray for each other. We've got to love each other. We've got to be passionate about it. And, and even as you think about your missions emphasis month uh, uh, and you hear about these other churches in, in, in these other countries, do you desire God to bless those churches? Do you passionately pray for them? Are you just kind of like uh, uh, pray for your, your little mission card on Wednesday and that's it? Or is there a passion, a desire to pray God? Uh, those people in China and, uh, and those people in this country and that, would they get, I pray they get saved. <laughs> and I pray that church would be blessed and God would do a work. Where is our passion for the gospel of Jesus Christ to be spread around the world? Can it be said of us that, that, that 
we did not cease to pray. And that we had a desire, we, had a, we, we were going to before God and we were begging God, bless uh, that, uh, bless my pastor, Lord, give, help my pastor, Lord, uh, bless those people in our church. And, and where is your desire to see God bless others in the church? Where is your desire to see God bless other churches and to bless missionaries and to bless your kids and to do a work? Where's your passion? Where is your desire for prayer? And then it goes on. What was his specific desire for them? What was, he, what was he pleading and begging and asking God to do for this, this, this believers? By the way, this church that Paul probably didn't know most of them personally. <laughs> and yet he has the desire and a passion and, uh, for these people. And what was it? And back in verse 9, it says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of His will. He desired that those believers would be filled with the knowledge of God's will. Now, this, this, this word filled is an interesting word. Uh, as you study it and look at it, it's more than just that they might know God's will. We, this word filled is used in another place, and I think if we, we read it in another place in Scripture, it helps us to more fully understand what this word means and what Paul is saying here by the Holy Spirit. We see in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18 a very common verse. And be not drunk with wine, where is in excess, but be what? Filled with the Spirit. What does it mean to be filled with the Spirit? Does it mean you just know Him? No, it means you're what? You're controlled by the Spirit of God, right? When you're filled with the Spirit, the Spirit has taken control, and you are doing what the Spirit wants you to do. You're speaking the words He wants you to say. You're behaving in the way He wants you to behave. You are filled with the Spirit. You're not uh, uh, under the control of, of wine. When you're drunk, you're under the control of what? Alcohol. <laughs> but when you're filled with the Spirit, what are you under the control of? The Holy Spirit. You're yielded to Him. You're under His control. So when Paul prays, says this, that they would be filled with the knowledge of His will, he's saying, I, want, I pray that you would be not only know the will of God, but that you would be controlled by it. That it would be an influence in your life that would control you to do what I want you to do, what God wants you to do. That you would be filled with the knowledge of His will. That you would be controlled by it. God wants us to be controlled by the knowledge of His will. Where will you find the knowledge of God's will? Anyone know tonight, this morning? Where do you find The Bible, right? You find it in the Bible. God wants, and if we are to be filled with the knowledge of His will, that means you need to be filled with the Scriptures. That means you need to be controlled by what? The Scriptures. I give you a couple uh, examples this morning. As you read your Bible, you should be praying, God, help me to be filled with the knowledge of your will. And you'll come across verses in the Bible, 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 3. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. What does it mean to be filled with the knowledge of God's will? It means this, I know that I'm not supposed to be involved in fornication. And that should control the way that you behave. That should control the thoughts you think. It should be filled with the knowledge of it. His will is you would abstain from fornication. So to be controlled, filled with the knowledge of His will means you know that and you say, you know what? That's God's will. I am going to not think this thought and I am not going to look at that uh, internet site and I am not going to do this. <laughs> filled with the knowledge of His will. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. To be filled with the knowledge of God's will is to know that I need to be thankful in everything. And then when a situation comes in life that is not something that is real to be real thankful for, you say, Lord, thank you <laughs> for what you're doing. Thank you. 
for what you're doing. And, and you might not, uh, you might look at the situation as tough, it's hard. I, I like, uh, we were at youth camp just a few weeks ago and the, and, the, and the preacher said, you know, you need to look at struggles in this way. You need to look at those struggles that you're facing as God's opportunities to do a work in you. You're going through a difficult time, say, God, thank you that you have an opportunity to do something in me. <laughs> and be filled with the knowledge of his will. Be controlled by it. Be controlled by the will. Know that the knowledge of God's will is to turn your cell phone off during church. <laughs> and then so when you walk in, you're like, Lord, I'll be filled with the knowledge of your will. And hit the off button before the preacher starts preaching. <laughs> Say, now I'm a pastor. I can do that kind of stuff and, and get away with it. And uh, you don't, don't let your cell phone go off in my church. You'll get the same thing. But, but be filled with the knowledge of his will. And be, understand that was the prayer of Paul, that they might be filled with the knowledge of his will. So we need to pray that one for another. Dear Lord, I, I, I pray often, Lord, my son, I, I pray that he would know your will, but not only would he know it, he would be filled with the knowledge of it. He would, he would let it guide him. He would let it direct him. He would let it lead him in the right way. Lord, help, uh, help uh, 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 our pastor, you could pray. Help, Lord, help our pastor be filled with the knowledge of his will, uh, of your will, and, and to be guided and directed by it and to, and to know exactly what you want us to do uh, and, and so forth and pray that way for one another. And look what it says, knowledge of his will in all wisdom. In all wisdom. Well, it, you need to be controlled or filled with the knowledge of, of his will, but you need to do it in all wisdom. And we need to pray that we would, we would know and be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all wisdom. What is, what is the, that, what, why is that little phrase added on there? Well, wisdom is the right use or exercise of knowledge. It's being able to take knowledge and apply it and use it appropriately in your life. Because if you know God's will, but you don't know how to apply it or use it, and you never use it, it's not going to do you any good. You could know, but if you don't do, if you don't use, you lack wisdom. <laughs> An example, I, I, I know of a young man years ago that if you asked him, you say, the Bible says this, he would say, I know. And God wants you to do this, and he would say, yeah, I understand that. And then I would ask him, well, why do you continue to ignore God's will? He lacks wisdom. He knows, but he, he's not going to apply it. He's not going to use it. And he thinks, well, no, I'm going to do it this way. Lack of wisdom. He lacks wisdom. And I, I've talked to young men who, they, they used to make bad decision after bad decision, and they're suffering consequences, and they say, man, I just have terrible luck. And I'm thinking back, and I'm saying, no, this is what God says, and if you don't do what God says, you suffer these consequences. And I'm saying, are you doing what God says? Well, no. Do you know God says to do this? Yes. Then why aren't you doing it? Well, I have this reason, this reason. You, have no, you lack wisdom. You need to pray for that guy to have wisdom. You need to pray your kids have wisdom and, and your pastor and, and your fellow church members that they would have wisdom. That they would know God's will and desire to be controlled by God's will and let it lead them and guide them. In all wisdom, with wisdom, with the ability to see, okay, here is what God says in his word, and here's how am I supposed to use it. <laughs> here's what I'm supposed to do with it. And have wisdom to know what to do with God's will. In James 1, verse 5 and 6, this, any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven, uh, uh, driven with the wind and tossed. Ask for wisdom. I'm amazed that this verse is in the Bible, if any of you lack wisdom, you come, and God, he upbraideth not, he's not God's not going to hold it against you. You know, God's not going to, if you come to God and say, I need wisdom, God's going to say, yeah, you do. <laughs> he's just going to do what? Here you go. God just says, here you go. And how, how many times, even in my own life, I'm praying, Lord, you know, what's going on? And, I'm, and, and he just says, why don't you just ask for wisdom? Hey, you made a stupid decision, and now you're asking for forgiveness. It would have been better, better to ask for wisdom before. It's the promise. We believe the promise or not. 
And we need to pray, Lord, help us to have wisdom, and Lord, help those around us to have wisdom, that they might know how to do your will. And then in Colossians 1.9, it says, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Spiritual understanding. We need to pray that we would have spiritual understanding. Now, I, it was, uh, you know, a young man, I don't know if, Many of you might remember him. Uh, Tino used to come to church here. And I remember being over to his parents' house several times and witnessing to Tino's dad and sharing the gospel with him. And I, I think I did it maybe two, maybe three times. Share the gospel with Tino's dad. And you would ask Tino's dad, if you died today, do you know that you'd go to heaven? And he would say, yes. And I'd say, great, how do you know? I've been baptized. And I would say, well, you know, baptism doesn't save you. And I'd take him through some verses, you know, for by grace are you saved through faith and not of works, lest any man should boast. And, and, and he would say, you're right. You're right. And I said, but you said you're saved because you were baptized. And he's all, yeah, that's why I'm saved. And I just kept going in circles every time. And I, I, I just... You know, what was the problem? He lacked spiritual understanding. He just couldn't make the connection. And it was like this circle. He, hadn't, he, he couldn't see. He, he lacked spiritual understanding. Now, he lacked it because he was unsaved. <laughs> he was a natural man. And, and I, he needed, we need to pray for him. Lord, help him to have spiritual understanding to see that he's thinking in circles. We need to pray that people would have spiritual understanding. It's like the, uh, um, uh, the, the wife who, who's, who's, who you're counseling and you're like, you need to submit to your husband. And she says, I know, I, I know I need to submit. But he just, his financial plan is just stupid. I'm not going to listen to him. But you're having marriage problems. You need to submit to your husband. But his plan is stupid. She lacks, but she doesn't, and she doesn't see the connection that their marriage is a mess because she won't submit. This doesn't see the connection. Well, I'll submit in every area except this. And it, no, it's not my fault. It's his. Because this financial plan is... To, and it's, they don't see the connection. You lack spiritual understanding and you need to pray. Lord, help us to have spiritual understanding. Uh, sometimes I need spiritual understanding. Things are going on in the church and I'm just looking at it and I'm like, I don't know what that's about, Lord. Help me to have some spiritual understanding in this issue. Help me to see what's really going on. Help me to see what's going on in the spiritual world to see what you are doing and pray for spiritual understanding. I remember counseling a guy who had a, a gambling problem. This was years and years ago. And, uh, uh, and uh, he came in and he's like, I have this gambling problem. And, and, and so he started counseling him. And I like, all right, here's what you do. You read your Bible in the morning. No. Do you pray in the morning? No. And I said, okay, let's start on a plan. How's that going to help me with my problem? He lacks spiritual understanding. I mean, uh, what did he want me to do? Pay his gambling debts? <laughs> and that was going to help him? No. He lacks spiritual understanding. He couldn't make the connection between, I need to do what God wants me to do every day, and then that's going to help me to get over this problem I have, because I'll be controlled with the knowledge of God's will. <laughs> he couldn't make the connection. And there's a lot of people, a lot of Christians that go through struggles and they're suffering consequences and they're making bad decisions and they can't make the connection. And you're telling them, you, you need to do what the Bible says. And you're like, oh, I tried that. I did. And they just can't. And you need to pray, Lord, you need to pray, Lord, I pray they have spiritual understanding. <laughs> we need to pray for spiritual understanding. And too many lack spiritual understanding. And by the way, one way to get some good spiritual understanding is to get in your Bible and to exercise yourself in the Word of God. Hebrews 5, 13, For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe, but strong meat belongeth to them that are full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Exercise yourself in the Word. Don't just be a baby Christian. Get some strong meat. Get some spiritual understanding. Pray as you read the Word of God. Pray, God, help me to have spiritual understanding. 
Not just to read the words on the page, but help me to understand spiritually what you're saying, what you want me to do. Help me to make the connection to my life. <laughs> and we need to pray that way for one another. We need to pray and have a desire that, that others around us and ourselves would be filled with the knowledge of God's will. We need to pray that we would have the wisdom to rightly use that knowledge. And, and we need to pray that, that we would have spiritual understanding and, and that we might see how the Scriptures and the Word of God applies to our life. Determine to live your life knowing what the will of God is and to being controlled by it. Determine. Set out to do that in my life. Lord, as a pastor, I, I pray, Lord, <laughs> I want to know what your will is for this church because it's his church. And Lord, guide me, direct me, help me to know and, and help me to be filled with the knowledge of your will. And we need to pray that one for another. I found people come, and when they find out you're a pastor, they'll come to you with their problems, and they'll think you have all the answers, and you're thinking, whoa, I don't know what I'm going to tell this guy. <laughs> How did he get himself in this mess? You know what I, I've learned? I have to start praying, Lord, <laughs> help this guy to be filled with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and have some spiritual understanding. Because I can give him some verses, and I can share some Bible with him, and that's what's going to help him, but help him to see it. I'm going to see that's what's going to help them. That a relationship with you and walking with you. And we need to pray this way one for another. And we see a passionate prayer that they might be filled with the knowledge of God's will. And then in verse 10, we see a, a, a purpose in his prayer. And it says this in Colossians 1.10, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. What is the purpose of being filled with the knowledge of God's will? It's so that you can please Him. <laughs> it's so that you might walk worthy unto the Lord and you might be pleasing unto Him. We are to live our lives to please God. Revelation 4.11 says, uh, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. We were created for God's pleasure. We are for His pleasure. We are to uh, have knowledge of His will and seek to, to find the will of God and to do the will of God and to be controlled by it that God might be pleased with our lives. We're to seek to please Him. We're to seek to walk worthy of Him unto all pleasing and to please God. Do you pray about your daily walk with the Lord? Do you pray that your daily life might be pleasing to God? Do you wake up in the morning and say, God, may my life be pleasing to you today? Now, I wish I could say I've woken up every morning and said that. I haven't. <laughs> but I need to, and you need to, every day. Lord, may our lives be pleasing. Lord, I, I pray, may my sons and, and may my daughter's life be pleasing. May my wife's life be pleasing. And, and, and may our church and, and the members of our church, may they walk worthy of you and live life that is pleasing to you. And I find if I pray that, God will show me things that aren't pleasing to him. I think that's often why we don't pray it. Our flesh doesn't want to know the things that aren't pleasing. <laughs> and we need to pray, God, help me to walk worthy, to be pleasing to you, to live a life pleasing to you. And, and, and we see several uh, scriptures that tell us how to please God. You say, how do, I, how do I walk worthy and please God? It's almost like, you know, you look at it and you're like, how do I walk worthy of, of Jesus Christ? I mean, and I feel the same way. I'm a sinner saved by grace. But uh, it's because of him and, and uh, you know, because of that he saved me and all the works that I do, they are, uh, they, they, they are only because of Jesus Christ. Any good work that I have, it's only made acceptable because of Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's it. But how do I walk worthy and please him? Well, the Bible, Jesus gives us some ways to, to, to please him. 2 Timothy 2, verse 4, No man that warth entangle himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a, be a soldier. 
You say, how can I please God? How can I walk worthy? Don't entangle yourself in the affairs of this life. Don't get so wrapped up in this life. You are a citizen of heaven. Don't be so wrapped up in this life that it's all about here and it's all about now and it's not about eternity. And you will please God. And we need to often pray, Lord, help me. Is this something that is going to wrap me up? Is this thing that I'm about to do? Is this thing a family member is about to do? Is it going to tangle them in the affairs of this life? Or, Lord, is it something that's going to be worthy of you and pleasing to you? We need to ask that often. I, I, I need to pray that often. Lord, is this, uh, is this activity we're going to do at the church, is this plan that we have for, the, uh, for our church, or for our services, is it something that is going to tangle us up in the world? Or is it something that's going to be pleasing to you? Something worthy of you. We need to pray and ask these things often. You know, we, we please God when we live by faith. Hebrews eleven six. 6, But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. To live by faith. Is there anything right now you can say, I'm living by faith in that matter? In fact, it's this way, the, the scripture is this way. If there's anything in your life that, is, that you're not doing by faith, God is not pleased. It's not just, well, in this area of my life, I'm living by faith. Well, then the rest of your life is not pleasing to God because that's, we, God is pleased when we live by faith, when we trust Him. Have you ever prayed like the apostles prayed in, in Luke 17, verse 5? They said, Lord, increase our faith. <laughs> Lord, increase my faith. Help me to grow in my faith. That I might please you. Lord, help me, I, I, I pray. Lord, help me to, to, to live my such life in such a way that, that my family's faith might grow. They might see that I've stepped out by faith and see you move in and they see that and their faith grows. Pray that they would have faith. And we pray that we'd walk worthy and be pleasing unto God. And it goes on and, and we'll have to speed up here and uh, running uh, short on some time here. But in Colossians 1 and 10, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work. Do you pray that your pastor would be fruitful in the good works that he does? Do you pray that way? Have you ever spent time praying about his steady and his messages? And saying, that's a good work he's trying to do. That's a work that he's been called to do by God. Give himself, what, to prayer and to the word. Do you pray he would be fruitful in that? Do you pray that way? Do you pray that, that your church would be fruitful in the good works they do? You know, you had, I think you had a vacation Bible school last month or something. I remember my mom telling me. Did you pray that that would be fruitful? That was a good work. Did you pray it would be fruitful? Did you pray for fruit in that? You have in your missions emphasis month on Sunday nights. Have you even prayed that that would be fruitful? Have you prayed that, that it would be fruitful? Have you, have you prayed that it would be blessed and it would be fruitful in that good work that you're trying to do to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ? Have you prayed about it? Have you sought the Lord in it? In John 15, verse 8, it says, Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be to my disciples. God is glorified when we bear fruit. Are we praying that ourselves and those around us would be fruitful in the in all good works remember we are a people called to do good works titus 2 14 who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works are you praying for fruit do you pray you'd be fruitful do you do you pray that god would help you to reach people with the gospel of jesus christ have you prayed that? Lord, help me to reach my neighbor. Help me to be fruitful. Help me to have, see, have opportunities to witness. Open doors for me to share the gospel. Have you prayed that way? Have you ever prayed about being fruitful in the fruit of the Spirit? 
Have you ever prayed, Lord, help me to experience joy like you want? Lord, help me to have that temperance, that meekness. Lord, help me to have that faith. And help me to have those fruits of the Spirit. I'm going to, to grow in my love and to be a fruitful Christian. Have you ever prayed and asked for fruit? Have you ever prayed that a fellow brother in Christ would be fruitful in the fruits of the Spirit? <laughs> Have you ever prayed that, that your pastor would experience the fruits of the Spirit? Have you ever prayed your church would have opportunities to get the gospel to, to everyone in Santa Maria? And that it might be fruitful. Have you ever prayed that way? And asked the Lord that way? Paul goes on to say, Colossians 1.10, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Have you ever prayed that your church, fellow church members, might increase in the knowledge of God? Have you ever prayed yourself, Lord, help me to increase in the knowledge of you? <laughs> help me to know you? I'm not just talking about merely a head knowledge but really knowing God, knowing about Him, who He is. You know, that's a, that's a hard prayer to pray sometimes because if we're going to get close to the Lord, guess what? We're going to have to experience, you know, the cross. Paul said, uh, prayed this way, he said that I might know him, Philippians 3.10, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto death. We were prayed, Lord, help me to increase in my knowledge of God and just to get to know you. The hard part and the warning I might give you when you pray this way is that if you're going to know him and the power of his resurrection you got to know the fellowship of his sufferings. And if you're going to really know him, you're going to have to be made conformable unto his death. You might have to go through some things. But have you prayed, Lord, I pray that our church would increase in the knowledge of God. They would just know you. I pray that we would know you, that I would know you, God. That I would know you personally. God, help me to know you personally. Now, like I said, it's just, your flesh is going to scream against that prayer. <laughs> it will. Because you're going to go through some difficulties. You're going to see some things. But there's nothing sweeter than knowing God and spending time with Him. Then we see in verse 11 a, a plea for power here. We saw he, he, he prayed that they would be filled with the knowledge of God's will. And he, he, he prayed they would walk worthy unto the Lord and be fruitful in, in all that they do. And they would increase and, and know the Lord. And then there was a plea for power. Verse 11, strengthened with all my according to his glorious power. Do you understand to accomplish the will of God? to do the will of God, to be pleasing to the Lord in all that we do. We need His power. We need the strength that comes from Jesus Christ. We need His might. We need His glorious power. We need to pray and ask for the power of God. You need to pray, Lord, I pray that, that my pastor would be strengthened with might from you. Lord, I pray that, he, he, that, that the, the glorious power of the Lord would be upon him. I pray, dear Lord, that you would strengthen my wife with your might. I pray, dear Lord, you would strengthen my kids with your might. I pray that the power of God would be upon my children. I, I pray, dear Lord, and I ask that your power would be upon me. Ephesians 6, verse 10, Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Ephesians 3, 16, that he might grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Do you pray for God's strength? Do you pray? Or do you think, yeah, hey, I got it. 
You might say today, well, I don't think that. I don't think I got it. But if you've never prayed and asked for his strength, if you never pray and ask for his power, you're living like you got it. You're living in a prideful way like, Lord, I don't need you. You might not say it. That's how you're living. You need to ask for his strength. You need to ask for his power. You know what it says there at the, the last phrase there? Undo all patience and long-suffering with joyfulness. We need to pray, Lord, help our church to be patient. Lord, help my kids. To, I pray, Lord, help my kids to be patient. I know they're going to grow up, and they want to get out there, and they want to do their own thing, and they're going to want... Lord, help them to be patient. Lord, help them to be long-suffering, and they're going to go through some difficulties and trials. Lord, I pray that they would be long-suffering and not turn from you, but they would be long-suffering. Yeah, there's going to be other Christians that are going to hurt them and, 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 uh, and disappoint them, and there's going to be things that are going to go on, and they might see some hypocrisy or, or someone might say something. Lord, help them to be long-suffering and to stay faithful. Lord, help my pastor to be patient, to be long-suffering. Lord, help my fellow church member. Lord, uh, help, help uh, uh, Brother Campbell over there in Wheatland to be patient, to be long-suffering, and just to endure and to stay faithful. And help him to do it with joyfulness. Have you ever prayed that other people would have joy? Apostle Paul did. He prayed that that church, that, that, yeah, they would, they would go through some trials and there would be, they would need patience and they would need to be long-suffering. But he said, Lord, I pray that they would have joy in that. I pray that there would be some joy there. Things might not always go as we think they should. Promises of God that we've asked for, they might take a lot longer to come true than we think they should. But you know what? God says we can have joy while we wait. We can have joy. You can go through heartaches, you can go through difficulties, and you can have joy. You can do it with joyfulness as you wait, as you endure, as you forbear. You can do it with joyfulness. In Nehemiah 8, verse 10, they said, For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Joy is that inner strength and peace that comes from God. You pray that way for one another. You pray. You pray, Lord, I pray. I know that, uh, you know, maybe you're praying, Lord, I know my pastor, he's going through a hard time, and I pray he'd have and have patience and, and to forbear, but I pray he'd have joy. You look at a fellow church member and they're suffering. Lord, I pray that they, they, they would endure this trial with joyfulness. Lord, I pray. I know my kid, he's struggling right now, but I pray he would do it with joy. There would be a joyfulness there. Have you ever prayed that way for one another? And we see the Apostle Paul pray for this church. We see through his prayer that he, these people that he did not know personally, but he had a love for them, cared about them. And I see, think we see that in his prayer for them. Do we love each other enough to pray this way for one another? To spend some time before our God on our face, praying for one another, caring for one another. And I think we should often visit this passage and we should pray this way for each other. I think as you think about missions and you think about these other churches that these missionaries are starting, you say, how do I pray for them? Well, there's a, there's a good starting place right there. Pray. Let's pray for each other. Let's be a praying people. Praying for one another. Praying that we would be filled with the knowledge of God's will. Praying that we would walk worthy of of the Lord and be pleasing to Him. Praying that we would have His power and His strength upon us. Praying that we would do it with joyfulness. We do it with joyfulness. Let's uh, stand together and we'll, we'll dismiss in prayer. Dear Lord, we do 
thank you, dear God, for this passage. And dear God, help us to be and these here to be a people that, that pray, that pray passionately and fervently, that pray about your will and, and walking in your way, dear God. And we pray, dear God, that you would just bless and, and move in that way and we'd just see your hand. And dear God, I pray that we would all be strengthened with your might and your power and we would know your will and be filled with the knowledge of it and, and, and with all wisdom, dear God. And help us to have spiritual understanding, dear Lord. Even as the message is preached this morning, dear God, may we have spiritual understanding. May we be filled with the knowledge of your will, dear God. And, and I know that your, your word will be preached this morning, dear God. May we let that... Fill us and guide us and control us and direct us, dear Lord. And dear Lord, may we leave this place today walking worthy of you, being pleasing to you in all that we do, fruitful in every good work, Father. Strengthen with your might and your power. Dear God, may we be patient, long-suffering, dear God. And may we have that joy that is promised from the Holy Ghost. We thank you for what you'll do, Father. Pray you'll bless the service to come. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.